Xbox isn't doing too hot right now. In fact, it hasn't been for a while. Ever since the tragic reveal of the Xbox One and the clumsy launch that followed, Microsoft has spent most of the past two console generations clawing back ground from Sony and Nintendo. It sells the least hardware in games and doesn't possess the blueprint for pop culture dominance it once did. Halo has of course been a household name since its inception two decades ago, but I'd struggle to say the same about Gears of War, Forza, or any other major properties the console giant has shepherded through its history. Yes, it bought the temporary rights to certain exclusives in the past and now owns god knows how many massive names thanks to the acquisition of Bethesda and Activision, but how many of these are Xbox truly responsible for? The answer is not many. Not everyone realizes it, but Master Chief's franchise wasn't exactly a Microsoft creation either. The game actually began life in development for Macintosh systems, having received its historic first public showing at Macworld 1999. By then, it had established many of the visual and mechanical hallmarks we'd all grow familiar with, but it operated more like a third-person shooter or real-time strategy experience. That goes a long way in explaining why the original Halo has so many vast levels, because they were never meant to be explored from a first-person perspective. Bungie has a history with both genres, so Halo could have been a fledgling attempt to combine them or try something new. In what we now can label as a rather smart move, Microsoft would acquire Bungie in 2000, and go on to retool Halo as a major launch title for the original Xbox. Well, we can comfortably say that it single-handedly put the console on the map. Without it, I'm unsure if Xbox would have weathered the initial storm of its first generation. There aren't any other major exclusives for the console at this time that spring to mind, and it was Halo's rise and the release of its sequel alongside the growing popularity of Xbox Live that allowed the brand to grow beyond its infancy. Xbox 360 launched ahead of the PS3, and thanks to Sony's hubris, was able to become a market leader before it even had left the starting line. Don't get me wrong, it's impossible to overstate how much of an impact Halo had on modern video games, regardless of whether Microsoft was truly responsible for it or not. It proved to millions that first-person shooters could play well on console, introduced a loadout system and controls that would become the standard until the launch of Call of Duty Modern Warfare six years later. And even that didn't change that much, walking the road Halo helped pave in the first place. Online gaming, competitive shooters, and the way in which we interact with the genre wouldn't be the same without Halo. For an entire generation, Halo was the single game keeping Xbox afloat, and flagging sales had Microsoft leaving its debut console behind to pursue something new. The console landscape as we know it would be completely different today if Halo hadn't ended up being the golden goose Microsoft so desperately needed, and we've seen its failure to foster talent outside of key franchises again and again since the departure of Bungie. I will always have a soft spot for Halo 4, 5, Infinite, but for mainstream audiences, these new titles by 343 Industries were largely underwhelming and failed to live up to the legacy of their predecessors. Halo hasn't been the same since Bungie flew the nest, and while many have tried to fill the void left behind by Master Chief, none have quite measured up. I can't think of any exclusive that either hasn't been ported to other platforms or become a relative failure to Microsoft. When you compare them to anything Sony and Nintendo have coming out, there's just no competition, and the lack of games is ultimately poised to be Xbox's downfall. Even after billions of dollars spent on acquisitions, the console giant is still unable to properly nurture talent or manage the studios under its umbrella, made worse by its desire to chase dying trends and to make every game as big as it can, regardless of how long these titles take to make. When you already have a lacking library, you can't expect fans to wait around for a big hit game that may never come. A few years ago, there was a foolish belief that Xbox could be the savior of video games. It was spending billion on acquiring studios, it promised to give untold creative freedom to, along with all the resources they might need to create the games we care about. But after shutting down Tango Gameworks, Arcane Austin, and several other studio closures and layoffs, now it seems they were simply after another golden goose. A hard ask when you aren't laying your own golden eggs. Halo hasn't picked up a victory in years and in its wake, nothing has come along to replace it as Xbox flounders for purpose despite owning so many studios and properties. I'm starting to doubt its relevance and whether it would still be around if it wasn't for a stroke of luck over 20 years ago. What do you think? Let us know in the comments and be sure to check out thegamer.com for all your gaming needs.